Hi folks, TJ here. I had a next epiphany today while driving and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, a next, this is a Specky Next, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. I'm sure most folks watching my channel are. And I started thinking about the next as I was driving to get allergy shot, actually, this morning. And I thought I would uh, videotape this just in case it's a novel idea, a good idea, a bad idea. It's an idea and it's just a thought and a process that I go through when something pops into my head. And so I'm going to call this the next epiphany. And well, many of us love uh, computers. This whole channel, or most of it, is about my love for retro and vintage computers. But I don't want the word vintage to mean that I only like things of old, only, and I'm not willing to advance past it. And I started thinking about it. So how did I come to this thought? So if you also watch my channel, you'll know I love air-cooled Volkswagens. They're old. They're from the 1950s, 60s, 70s. They made the Beetle air-cooled forever. I'm more of a bus guy myself, and I am working on my 1967 Volkswagen bus, and I buy parts, some through mail order, because they're specialized and you can't get them locally, and some I get at a local parts for imports here in uh, where I live. And the owner, uh, I, I, for some reason, popped into my head as I was driving for allergy shot because I saw somebody riding a bicycle. And I recently saw a post. I don't think I have him as a friend on Facebook because I only know him by Rick and I bought enough parts from him that I remember. And uh, I, I saw a picture that he posted of him in a biker uniform, you know, those tight little spandexy things or whatever, and uh, saying that, I, you know, I don't mind kind of getting older. I love bicycling and I love, you know, doing stuff. And I thought he was in his 70s uh, I, because last time I bought some parts from him, I kind of said, you know, but well, you've been doing this for a long time, you know, parts for imports. Uh, are you going to ever, you know, stop? What's the scoop? And he basically, you know, kind of said, you know, I'm getting to that point, but, you know, just uh, I continue to do it. And nothing come to my mind after he kind of said, you know, I've been doing this for a while or whatever, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but then I saw this picture and I thought, okay, it's interesting. And I started reading the picture and he's in his 80s and he's out there riding a bicycle like a young whippersnapper uh, and started making me think, of car shows. This is going to be a, a long circulation here, but hear me out because it's all going to come back to the Spectrum Next and retro vintage computers. Anyway, so I started thinking, you know, car shows. Have you ever been to a car show? Uh, I love going to old car shows uh, and they have car shows for modern stuff too, but vintage car shows, mostly Volkswagen. And when you go there, a lot of times they'll have music from that time era, uh, 60s, 70s, and so on. So you'll always hear, ah! out you know the beach boy type of songs and all that type of thing and beach boys i don't think so saying that wipeout song but of that time period you know the beach boys that type of thing and uh started making me think okay you're getting older and what do people go to car shows for they're there to look at the cool cars but they're also there to reminisce reminisce of days of old and it's something you and I do all the time, reminiscing of the wonderful computing of the 1980s. Some 70s, a lot of 80s. We love our Speckies. We love our Ataris. We're reminiscing. We're trying to grasp on to something that's old that brought us such good memories that maybe we're not feeling in today's age. So we go back and reminisce. So at a car show, you're kind of doing that. You're going back to a time that felt good for you, makes you feel like a kid again for at least that car show. And then you go home and you go, oh, my back hurts and my, my keister hurts and all those things because you're getting older and you may not have, you know, that many more years left in doing some of these fun things. So then it started making me think, does the next specky neck necessarily have to mean that we're only reminiscing? We're only thinking vintage? No, and I hope that's not the case for everybody here because uh, the next is a springboard for the future. It can be. I think if we play our cards right, and my cards are very limited. <laughs> I don't have quite a 52-card deck in, up here. Or how is it 52 cards? Uh, I like a lot of jokers. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's a springboard for possibility of doing something. And that something in my head was... 
uh, you know, for many of us, we're, we're buying the next because it can play old specy games. And it has some new capabilities to create our own games, which is all cool. But lots of kids have easy programming things in modern computers that they can go make a game for an iPhone, for example, or an Android. They have all these things to make it easy for them to, to make stuff. A little harder for us back in the olden days where we didn't have programs to make the programs, even though they do have them out there. They had some things like, and I never used any of them, but they had programs that allow you to create games. I think AGD or whatever off the top of my head is one of them, or make your own text adventure. All very cool things. And I think for some that are willing to look beyond the box, beyond Windows, beyond Mac OS, beyond Linux, uh, just as a, uh, hey, this is old stuff's kind of cool. The simplicity of these old things have made a retro comeback. They've made a huge comeback. And maybe being able to say, hey, just because we make games that are so lifelike now and have perfect sound and audio and all this, maybe there's still a lot of fun to be had in the older, more simple games. So I think many people like myself are making kind of games of old and simple, less graphic-y, less audio, but it's a lot of fun. It's all about the game itself, not necessarily the widgets and the video and the audio behind it all the time. So we can make a lot of fun things. But what's beyond that? Um, the odds are we're not going to find many new young people gravitate towards a Specky Next, for example, because they can kind of do that on some modern computers. And to be truthful, they can do that on modern computers, period. But it started making me think, what are some other things on the next that the real programmers can take this as a starting point to move forward? The Specky Next is basically, hey, we want to make a new Specky. We wanted to start a... Uh, a start where they left off kind of thing, and we've got an FPGA that can emulate the old but add some new speed and some new capabilities and a little pie board and all that. What's beyond that? Can we think of anything else? And the one thing that comes to my mind is I loved playing games with family back in the day, with friends, having them actually come over your house, and they call it couch co-op now, which is not something new. People do it all the time. Uh, something that serves you on a daily basis, a reminder that simple can be quite fun at the same time. So it popped into my head, how about a, a pro taking uh, the capability of how strong the pie is, uh, being able to have something in the pie that when you turn on your next for the first time, it goes and searches the little pie and it searches out into the internet and says, TJ enjoys playing games about space or cloud people or he likes swearing, whatever it is, it starts compiling some key things from things that I've been playing. And then that's not new. I mean, news feeds and all the feeds that you see on iPads and everything serve us every day of here's the news, here's what we've been tracking you for. It's a little too, uh, too much, though. It's tracking into our every movement but something that we can create that maybe we start out by telling the next program, uh, the next epiphany program that says, what are you excited about? I like games about space. I like eating. I like drinking beer. Just something that you can key in 10 key questions into it. And, and this next will search out on the internet every day for something that is specky related that may be of interest to you, to me. And so it serves you every time you turn on your next. It takes the next a, a little beyond what it is today. Today, yes, you can get the next on the internet and you can go search for things. But how about if it serves us every time we turn the next butler, the next epiphany, whatever. It serves you every day. You turn it on and it goes, talks to the pie quickly. It reaches out to the internet and it reaches out to the questions that you gave it and says, Here's a new game, 2023, that somebody made on itch.io that may be something you would like. And then it serves you a link and says, hey, by the way, TJ, I like, I hear that you like to swear. And I hear that you like games about sludge or whatever. And it goes out and grabs something about sludge. Uh, maybe Mr. Hare? Mr. Hare's in a lot of the pooper games. So uh, it reaches out and grabs something and it serves it to you. You click on a quick little download button. You don't want it on going to your next. 
Nothing automatic, but it serves you a quick little goblet that you can click on and it downloads again, and then you can play it. And it throws you into the lion's den like TJ. Everything about Specky is new to me. Even though I've been doing this five years, there is 10,000 bazillion games for it. Everything is new and fresh. I throw myself into the lion's den and I play this game for you. And a lot of people like Retro Robbins, if you're watching this, said, oh, TJ plays like shit. True, but I'm also being thrown into the game for the first time. So I, I would bet you 50% of the people that are thrown into the game like me probably play about the same as I would. And then there's the other 50% that are just really good at video games that blow by it or do a little better or whatever. Uh, but, you know, that's part of my thing. I just like throwing myself into the lion's den. I want to throw you into the lion's den. So that's why I introduced Game of the Week. Uh, and, and I typically say, give it your first 20 minutes and actually come back and report what your findings are. Uh, some people used to do that, and not too many anymore, uh, but some do say, hey, I played the game, it was kind of fun, and damn it, I wanted to swear too. But I thought, what can we do on the next to want to have a next Kickstarter 3? We need to uh, give it a little bit more than just reminiscing, than just remembering the days of old. I don't want to be stuck in the days of old only. In terms of video games, I'm fine with that. I'm good, because I don't like they look awesome. Lifelike video games on all these XG string boxes and all that stuff. It looks pretty impressive. But you've seen me play video games. <laughs> Left, right, shoot. That's what I do. All this other stuff, you need to have every appendage flying around doing stuff. And that's just not me. Uh, but I don't want to uh, say that I don't want to collect anything new, new and vibrant. And I'm not willing, you know, I want to be willing to try it. So I, want, I don't want to be stuck in the olden days. I want to proceed forward, but reminisce and remember the old days so it can take me forward. Does that make sense? Maybe. I'm rambling, but hopefully you're following this ramble. So anyway, I'd love to see, and I can't do it. I, I barely made Invasion of the Cloud people work. Uh, but somebody that had the knowledge of the pie and how to have it, you know, go through 10 questions. I'm going to itch my ear. Uh, go through 10 questions and you fill it in and then it kind of, and you could always update that. Like I now like sports cars. I, I now like whatever and you can update it and it will reach out on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whatever you tell it to do and we'll grab something new. So when you turn on your next for the first time, it will come up to the normal uh, uh, desktop that we have, but there is a program that you can click on uh, and, and, and with the next, the current next ZX OS, it's pretty awesome. You can, Put something right on this, the front screen and it will reach down into the bowels of a folder and play something from way down here. But have it just do a quick little reach out and it says, hey, DJ, happy day, do you? I've got a game for you or whatever. And then it serves you and you have your choice of doing it or not. And you go on your merry way. That's nothing I don't think new and novel, but on a next it would be. Uh, and I think something to entice people to say, there's this vintage retro computer that has lineage from the olden days that, rem that allows you older folks like me to remember the older days. But hey, younger folks, there's a lot of fun in these video games that are a little bit more simple. You may enjoy them and we want to introduce that to you. And something that makes that a little bit more automated, a little bit more personal, I think would be fun. So anyway, that was my little epiphany that I want to go to a car show. Volkswagen uh, show is coming up soon uh, here in California where I am. Lots of them. And I'm going to go check out some Volkswagens. They invigorate me to go out and work on my Volkswagen bus because I'm ultimately very slow on working on it. But it gives me that little excitement. And I go there and I hear these old songs. And I remember the days of old. And it's so exciting. But I don't want to forget that I can also move forward. Don't die old and stagnant. Be You know, sure, our bodies are going to fall apart, and they are, but every day wake up with a thought of, I want to try something new. I want to get out there and do something different, and don't let its, uh, you know, older age stop you from uh, proceeding forward at the same time. Remember the old, enjoy the old, but move forward a little bit every day and try something new. And uh, even for me, maybe I'm willing to try an Xbox G Sing 360, whatever it is. Is it up to... I don't even know what it is. PlayStation 5? Is that a current one? Xbox? I don't even know the number. <laughs> I just don't do newer stuff. But that's just me personally. I, if I went to a friend's house, I'd be more than happy to try it. But I probably won't do that well because, like I said, left, right, shoot. That's what I do. That's what I enjoy. But there's a lot of things that we can create today 
that will introduce some younger generations to how we felt of old and bring that personality, bring that love of things into your life. Because I have a feeling a lot of the younger folks don't grasp on to something as lovely as we did. We fell in love with a computer. Nowadays, it's just part of their DNA. Uh, and, and what can we introduce to them that shows them what they're using is more than just that. It is a wonderful device that you sh you're going to remember in 10, 20 years from now as your starting point. Anyway, that's it. Uh, my little epiphany for the day. I like to do these once in a while rather than just play a video game and do poorly. Although I just did a video that I, I feel like I kicked ass. Uh, what was it? Reckless Ronnie and his uh, retro hell. <laughs> uh, Janky Joe and in retro hell. I just played that game. It was awesome and I did pretty good, I thought. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Have a wonderful weekend. And this Specky Next can be more than just a old vintage computer or a retro one that has the feel of it. I think we have some room for improvement, room for growing this beyond what we have today. And at Next Kickstarter 3, what are we going to do to want to have people jump on that and maybe not have ever owned one? So thanks for watching. Bye. I got to answer that phone. Who's calling?